You've seen the real-life Wunderwaffe in action. But how does it work? Let's take it apart and find out. The two main components that drive the ejection and reloading are the slider and the ejector. To understand these parts and how they work, we have to go back to the source. How does it work in the game? After turning off the red switch, our character pulls the lever and each vacuum tube pops out one at a time in series. The lever stays where it is while he reaches for a new clip. Then he loads three new vacuum tubes pulls the lever a little bit to launch the speed loader, and racks the lever back in place. Finally, he turns the red switch back on and the vacuum tubes have power again. In summary, we need to one, load the vacuum tubes, two, eject them with a sliding motion, and three, light them up with the red switch. Let's start with ejection and loading. One of my engineering professors in college gave us this quote and I'll never forget it. He said, good engineers copy, great engineers steal and the fact that he stole the quote makes it that much better. So, let's steal from a Nerf gun design. Spring-loaded latch, you say? Don't mind if I do. But instead of a spring, let's use a rubber band, since it takes up less space and is easier to mount. Now all I have to do is drop a spring in there, and the vacuum tube will shoot out. How can we trigger this with a sliding motion? We need something that can be driven by the slider. Let's try something that rotates. A slotted cam should work. If we make the slot narrower as we rotate the cam, we can pull the latch open and launch the vacuum tube. We also need a way for the cam to return to its original position. For this, I 3D printed a torsion spring that pulls the cam back down once it's let go. With this design, we can make a sliding ramp that lifts the knob, rotates the cam, and launches the vacuum tubes. But this ramp also needs to travel in the opposite direction, once the new vacuum tubes are loaded, without launching them. So let's put a hinge on the ramp, so the knob can travel under it on the way back. Let's also add a spring, or a tiny orthodontic elastic, so it goes back in place. Finally, let's add a second ramp so we can launch all three vacuum tubes in rapid succession. All that's left now is to light it up. Amazingly, the vacuum tubes in the game have three metal prongs coming out of the bottom, which is the same number of connections needed to power an RGB LED. I love when that happens. Let's install an LED with three male jumper wires into the vacuum tube. Let's also install three female jumper wires into the ejector, and add a few holes to the case, and run those wires to an Arduino Uno. Now let's plug it in and see what happens. The rest of the magic is software, with one exception. The slider has a magnet embedded inside of it. The slider mount has what's called a Hall Effect sensor mounted to it. When the lever is pulled and tubes ejected, the sensor detects the magnet and sends its data pin to ground. This tells the microcontroller, via the software, to play the ejection sound. When the lever is pulled back like this, the software also prevents the trigger from playing the shooting sound effects. Now that we know how it works, let's put it back together and see it in action one more time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the original Wunderwaffe video where I go over all the features and functionality that I put into the prop. If you've ever wanted to own one of my iconic ray gun replicas, then stay tuned for the next video and make sure to subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to grab a hand-signed Wunderwaffe poster on your way out via the link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.